So, uh, President of the European Parliament, President Hans Pottering, he's here with, with us uh, just to, to hear, but also he will speak about uh, the treaty. And uh, we have uh, now uh, the possibility to address some greetings. First of all, I would like to thank uh, the European Parliament and the President, because uh, our history started just uh, uh, one, uh, one year, two years ago, uh, with the President asking him to support our uh, activities uh, for the European Union, for the future of the European Union. And um, we are now here, represented in many delegations from Europe, and um, you are here preparing a document. Uh, dear President, we are preparing uh, a document which uh, is a summary of more of 4,000 interviews in all Europe regarding four main topics. It's one is human rights, second is the role of uh, Parliament, uh, in the European Union. Second, third is peace and solidarity, international policy. And fourth is uh, the economy and the energetic cooperation. Dear President, dear rectors, we have two rectors here of Jerusalem. Um, rector, uh, uh, ambassadors, civil authorities, and uh, also representatives uh, from the Holy See, Monsignor Leuzzi, he will read uh, uh, a message from uh, Cardinale Bertone, Secretary of State. As you know, IZ is more and more engaged in the process of promoting a European citizen identity. I strongly believe that only a more solidarity participation to the integration process can help our continent to increase justice, peace and stability. Dear President, we have been very happy of your positive answer regarding our proposal to organize this forum of European university students under your personal patronage. So, uh, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, for me it's really a pleasure to be here today with you in this beautiful room. I understand it is a former refectorium of the Dominicans and sometimes churches and uh, monasteries are used for other purposes. But I think this purpose, to use it for university, bringing people together, not only from 20 countries of the European Union, but from the Middle East as well, the two professors, I want to welcome them, Professor Chaim Rabinovich and Professor Hassan Dweik, both from Jerusalem. It's great to have you here, and our good wishes for peace between Israel and Palestine is with you, and we are trying to work for that very hard. So it's really great. <laughs> to be here. And Emil Anton has uh, seen my website. So <laughs> I have not seen it for months. So I, sh I should control. I have the chief of cabinet, Klaus Welle, is here. So we have to look tomorrow. And we should have some pictures of this meeting on our website as well. <laughs> And the Vice President of the European Parliament, Luisa Mogantini, is here as well. I am, of course, I'm now President of Parliament, but I am a Christian Democrat. And I walk with Luisa Mogantini through Rome, and she is totally from the other side of the political <laughs> spectrum. But we have a good understanding because we believe in human rights, and human rights have to be applied even for members of the European Parliament. <laughs> mentioning the website. Uh, I have another son whose name is Johannes and today is his patron day. Is that the correct yes. word in English? And I, my name is not Johannes but Hans Gerd and it's the abbreviation of Johannes so it's my patron day and I will never forget It's also mine. It's yours as well. Avocado, I immediately felt you are an extraordinary person. You must have a saint which is extraordinary. So it's uh, Jean the Baptiste. Baptiste, one says yes, that? John, John the Baptiste. John, uh, Giovanni Baptista. Exactly. It's even better in Italian than in English. So I'm learning. <laughs> so 
It's really a pleasure to be here, and now I try to be very serious. But what I said was serious as well. <laughs> I want to say to the students, and we have heard the message of uh, State Secretary Cardin Cardinal Bertone, we should never forget where we come from, and we should never forget our values. And only if we have a solid basis we can understand the time we are living in and we can go into the future. If you allow me to say, and you mentioned, Emil Anton, the darkest years of my country. I was born in September, and I'm not saying it always, but I will say it because you mentioned a special word of an organization of this terrible totalitarian system. I was born in September 1945, and my father was a simple soldier. And in March, April, he was with the German troops on the, they withdrew from the Eastern Front. And we think it was never totally confirmed that he was killed somewhere in Pomerania, which is now Poland. So I never saw him. And I think, if you allow me, this is very personal what I am now saying. I think this is, by my own psychology, one of the reasons why I decided, when I was quite a young person like you, even maybe younger, to decide it, I decided to be engaged in politics and to be engaged for Europe, because Europe is peace. And this is one of the two principles why you are here, peace and solidarity. And I am committed to that, and so I am with the position of solidarity with you because you are working for peace. And dear students, I think we never should forget that this terrible time we had in Europe should never come back. And there is a great Jewish political scientist, she died unfortunately, but that was normal because she was very old, Hannah Arendt. And she was born in Germany and then a political scientist in America. And she spoke about the two totalitarian systems, national socialism and totalitarian communism. And I understand there are Polish friends here. Is that correct? There are Polish, Polish, Polish yes, students yes, here? Yes. Oh, Szenkuja, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, and I understand that your great prime minister, Donald Tusk, who is a personal friend, that they decide in Gdansk to make, to create a museum where there is a description of totalitarianism. And I think we need this description of our past to go into the future. And I will try to realize the concept of a house of European history during my limited time as President of the European Parliament, we always have only two and a half years as President of the European Parliament, and my mandate goes until the next European elections in June 2004, and the 14th of July we will elect the next President of the European Parliament. I want to have the decision in the European Parliament, and I ask Luisa Morgantini, but she has agreed already, to support the idea of a house of European history so that we can show to the young generation that comes to the European Parliament our history and where we want to go to, what is our future, our future in the European Union and on the European continent. And when I was elected to the European Parliament in 1979, and except me there are four other survivors since then, if somebody would have told me and I have seen the list. There are, I think, students from Estonia as well. Yes. Estonia, maybe Latvia and Lithuania. But anyhow, those three countries, 
nations were occupied by the Soviet Union. And if somebody would have told me in 1979 that those nations and that Poland, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Slovenia as part of the former communist Yugoslavia would be part of the European Union in 2004, the 1st of May, and that Germany would be united the 3rd of October 1990, if somebody would have told this to me in 1979, my answer would have been, this is a vision, this is a dream, but we will not experience it in our lifetime. But we experienced it in our lifetime, and this is one of the great miracles of our time. And I say in a time when there is a discussion about Lech Walesa, the great president of Solidarność, whether he might have committed some wrong things in the 70s. And I'm very frank and very open. I have never said it before. What Lech Kaczynski, sorry, now I made a mistake. <laughs> I didn't want to mention the, the president Lech Kaczynski in this connection. Lech Walesa, what Lech Walesa, the president of Solidarność, has done for Poland and for the whole of Europe and whole of the world, even if he might have committed some wrong things before. What he has done in the 80s and in the 90s, he is a great historic person, he is a hero of our time, and let's not destroy his great contribution he has done to mankind. And I want, and I want to mention, in this connection as well, the great Polish Pope, John Paul II. Without his great spiritual and moral leadership, the great change in Poland, at least so quickly, would not have happened. And I had the advantage to see the late Pope four months before his death. And he gave me a document, or it was signed by him, and his words, and I was told by Cardinal Djewicz, at that now the Cardinal of Krakow, who was then his assistant as bishop, that the Pope said what he wanted to have in this document. And he thanked our group, which I led for seven and a half years, the Christian Democratic Group, the European People's Party, and myself. I don't say it to speak about myself, but this is the truth. And he thanked us, and this is of great importance, that we defended the Christian values in connection with the European Constitution, which unfortunately failed in France and in the Netherlands. And the Pope says in this document, and it is in my office in Brussels, and if you are coming to Brussels in February next year, then I still am president. I invite you to be there. I will show you, I will show you this document. And the Pope says, although you were not successful to mention the Christian roots, and our group had decided uh, Judeo-Christian uh, Judeo roots, I wanted Christian Judaic roots, but then there was somebody in our group meeting and said uh, the Jews were there earlier than the Christians, and so just to have peace and have a solution in our political group, I accepted uh, Judeo-Christian roots. And that we were not successful to mention God, the Pope says in this document, although in this context you were not successful, it was worthwhile doing it. And I think this is important. And I say it to all who are now against, because we were not successful in this sense, who are now against, the re or might be against the Reform Treaty. It's not enough to have these things mentioned. It's important that we act as Christians or Jewish believers or Muslim believers, that we are present in the society and that we peacefully defend our values. Just having it written down is not enough. We have to defend our values always in our society. And dear ladies and gentlemen and dear friends, and I'm coming in a minute, and then I have already maybe to stop. I'm speaking too long, but mm. you are so inspiring to me what I heard before. We succeeded.
to get our Christian principles into the Constitution, which is now more or less the Reform Treaty, the dignity of the human being. And this is the most important in the world. I said before the Knesset, the 30th of May last year, the dignity of a Palestinian is the same as the dignity of a person from Israel or from Europe or from America or from Africa. Everybody is equal. And if we accept this dignity, then you can derive out of this very many political actions because you have to apply this principle and you can give an answer to many political challenges and problems. Dignity of the human beings, human rights, democracy, legal order, solidarity and subsidiarity. And all this is in the Reform Treaty and I regret very much that the Reform Treaty was rejected in Ireland. And I think we have friends of Ireland here. Yes. 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 Don't yes. never forget your, yes, yes. your country by a majority of 100 votes has rejected the Reform Treaty. But you are a great European nation and we will fight that your country in the end, after your country has told us where you see some challenges and we will try to give an answer, but we want to have Ireland as part of the European Union. We want to have Ireland as part of our European future. Yes, yes. So we are, we are waiting now for the answer which the Taoiseach of Ireland, the Prime Minister of Ireland, Brian Cowan, will give us in October when we have the next summit. And then I hopefully, we hopefully get to know the demands from the, or the wishes from the Irish side. But I must be very frank here. I am very sorry that even some anti-European colleagues from the European Parliament were successful to tell the people of Ireland that with this reform treaty, abortion would be easier in Ireland. Abortion has nothing to do with the reform treaty. And be careful in Ireland and everywhere in the world and in Europe what people tell you. Not everybody is telling the truth. And we should not allow that people who are liars are those people who in the end have the future of our continent in their hands. Don't believe these people. And I really ask you, the Irish and all the others, to commit to the future of Europe and to accept, to ratify this reform treaty because it is a basis for our common future as European Union in the 21st century. And this treaty gives us more democracy because the European Parliament will be the co-legislator in almost 100% of European legislation. This treaty gives us more democracy, this treaty gives us more possibilities to act and this treaty uh, gives us more transparency. And my final word is, unfortunately, our time is limited and I would be very happy if we could stay here longer but I have to uh, travel back to Brussels and tomorrow morning to Paris where we have a conference of the group chairs of the European Parliament to prepare the French presidency. And my last word is, we are living in the European Union, certainly not in a paradise. But if you come, if you leave the European Union, if you go to Africa, to the Middle East or to America, Latin America, Asia, it's always my feeling when I come back, although I don't travel too much abroad because I have already so much traveling to do in the European Union. When I'm coming back, I'm always happy to be back to Europe. And Europe does not start in Brussels or in Strasbourg. Europe starts where we live, where we are at home. And we have our local identity. We have our regional identity. We have our national identity and we have a responsibility for the world. And with this I want to conclude. In the European Union we are not, as I said, in a paradise. 
but is one of the best parts of the world. And if we look in these days to Zimbabwe, where a crazy dictator does not want to give up power, or whether we look to Belarus, where there is still a dictator, and the young people of Minsk, who at their university, the European Humanities University, this was closed, and they are now in exile in Vilnius in Lithuania. And I visited them recently, and they told me, let us, let you, I ask you, please don't forget us in Belarus. We want to live in a situation of freedom, of democracy, of legal order, and it's our responsibility to defend the rights of those Europeans who have not the chance to live in a society as we enjoy our society, and we have to defend their human rights. And ladies and gentlemen, if we look to Tibet now in these days, and it will be only a few weeks that the Olympic Games are opened, and I would have liked to go there to the opening ceremony, but I will not go there, and the European Parliament advises all politicians not to go to the opening of the ceremony. We are not asking for the boycott of the Olympic Games, but the politicians should not go there because so far the freedom and the identity of the Tibetan people, their religious situation, their cultural situation is not defended by the government in Be Beijing and we have to stand up to defend and to ask for their rights as well. So, dear friends, I want to encourage you to work for peace, to work for solidarity, and the spirit of this room, I think, is very inspiring, and I wish, I'm speaking now to the students, I wish you good decisions in your personal and hopefully political life. Perhaps there are some here who might one day be members of the European Parliament or of national parliaments. This is your century. The 21st century is your century. But that it is a good century based on peace and solidarity, you have not just to wait that others give it to you. You have to work for it. You have to be engaged. It's very fine for me, and I'm very happy to be here, although it's such a short time. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Very emotionate, very happy.